Everyone needs compassion, love that never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. To hope of nations Savior, he can move a mountain My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, alter of salvation He rose and conquered the 
Good morning, I'm Pastor David. We want to thank you for joining us for our online services here at Zion Gospel Church. 
we have some exciting news. Starting tonight at 7 p.m., we will have our first Sunday night service, showing sermons by Dr. Benjamin Crandall and other anointed preachers of the Word of God. Today, Pastor Doug Crandall will conclude his sermon series on No More Fear and what are the effects of that fear. So please click the share button for your family and friends and also put your prayer requests in the comments below and know that we will pray for you. So please prepare your hearts as Pastor Doug Crandall brings forth the word of God. God bless all of you this morning. We're coming to you from Zion Gospel Church. And uh, we just want to thank you for tuning in and for uh, coming our way. Uh, God's been doing great things, but we're, we've been preaching the last six weeks on fear. The effects of this coronavirus really are fear. And uh, I see it more and more. It's more and more obvious to me wherever I go. I was discussing a little bit of this the other day with my wife. And uh, I said, I go into, a, I go into the, one of the supermarkets and I'm looking at something, and somebody is next to me, and I got a little too close, and they jumped. Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm too close, too close. And uh, this is the effect. This is the effect. There's fear everywhere here. Wherever you go, you walk down the street, people walk around you. They go, they get away from you. They don't want you too close. And uh, if you roll your window down, you go to the bank, you roll your window down and talk to somebody, they get nervous right away. And uh, they want to see you with a mask. And I've got my mask that I've been wearing. I'm going to show you what I, what I have to wear. This is not by choice. This is because we have to do this. So we put this mask on, and uh, we all look like we're in another world. People lose their identity. They don't know who they are anymore. They really don't. So true. And they have a mask, and uh, they think it's going to protect them. But the truth is, only God's going to protect them. That's all. Just God. And... Uh, a mask is not going to do it, and neither three, uh, six feet away. And I was standing on a line that had ordered something, and uh, I got a little too close, and the person jumped backwards, almost fell down. And uh, I, I thought, I better help them before they hit the floor. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's getting ridiculous. A, a spirit of fear descending on the whole culture, That's right. on everybody. Mm -hmm. Crazy. It's not God. How's that? It is not God. Now, God, like I said last week, has given us wisdom. We have wisdom. We don't want to push this thing, Amen. and we don't want to go into an infected area and, uh, and test, test God. But I do know that God is not for all that's going down, and they've carried it way too far. And we're praying that we can get back to church here in the next couple of weeks, and I want you to join with us. We're fasting, and we're praying that God takes this barrier down, and this barrier happens to be the governor. And uh, God is going to help us, and uh, we're going to get back in church. Lift your hands up with me. Just praise the Lord. We're going back to church. We're going back to normal. Life is going to be the way it's supposed to be. And life is not going to be dictated by a mask and fear and six feet away. That's going to go. That's all fear. That's going to go. So we thank the Lord. We're going to have as many people in church as we can get in there. And uh, if they're too close, God will take care of them. Thank you, Lord. So we just thank God for what he's going to do. Really, today I want to talk to you about the effects of fear in your life, your personal life, and in everybody's life that's in, in your family. Uh, we're going to talk also about the effect of fear on Peter's life. On Peter's life. Fear will drain your faith battery. If you're trying to believe God for something and there's a little bit of fear in your life, it won't work. It won't work. You have to get around that situation. Fear will take your faith away. It'll destroy you. It'll take you down. And it's the devil's ultimate uh, weapon to destroy you. That's right. Ne next thing about it is fear will embarrass you because you will do things that you never dreamed you would do or you will say things that you never dreamed you would say. Uh you just, when you get into a fear situation, you don't know what to do, boom. Peter gets into this fear situation, and he denies Jesus. He never thought he was ever going to deny Jesus. He never thought he would ever do that. He thought he had faith in himself. I'm a strong guy. I got a sword. I can take care of myself. Grew up in the streets, you know, the streets of uh, Jerusalem or whatever. <laughs> but he had, he, had, he had a sword, and he was going to use it. He did use it. 
cut somebody's ear off. He was swinging this way, but he ended up cutting the guy's ear off. And Jesus picked the ear up, put it back on. And Jesus said, we're not going to live by the sword because we'll die by the sword. What a lesson that was, huh? Object lesson. Just, just put the ear back on. It worked. And they went right on with the arrest procedure. They didn't even slow down. Went right on with it. But God is so faithful as we go through this situation with this coronavirus situation, COVID-19. Next year it'll be COVID-20 or whatever. And uh, we thank God for all the scientists and all the doctors and everybody that's working with us. But I'm telling you this, God has to deliver us from fear. They don't have a pill that you can take to get rid of fear. That's right. They don't have that. And God is going to take us through. We're going to be victorious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles out. Turn with me. We're going to start this lesson today with uh, the Passover evening. One more time, the Passover evening. And uh, Jesus talking to his disciples. Now, Jesus starts this conversation off at the end of the Passover meal. At the end, they finish. The Bible says... After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then when they were there, verse 31, Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Now, get your Bibles, get a hold of them. This is Matthew 26, beginning on 31. We're going down from 31 to through 35. Then we're going to skip over, and we're going to go to Matthew 26, verse uh, 60, 69 to 75, all right? And one other reference we're going to do, and that's Luke 22, Luke 22, 31 and 32, all right? Now, if you have your Bibles, keep your finger in Matthew 26, but go over to Luke 22 just for a moment. This is really where the story begins here. Jesus has just warned them. I just read that scripture, that verse. Jesus just warned them that they're all going to be arrested and they're going to be scattered. And then, of course, Peter makes the statement of faith. If everybody gets goes away, runs away from you, not me, I'm not running. I'm staying. But notice what happens here in uh, Luke 22, beginning on verse 31 and then 32. Very important. Right after this, Right after this meal, Jesus says to Peter, and right after the statement, I believe it's after the statement that he made back in Luke's in Matthew's gospel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Now, in the original Greek, it says Satan has obtained permission to test you. My personal opinion, I don't want to get into this too deep, but my personal opinion is, was that statement that popped out of, out of his mouth, out of Peter's mouth, put him in a position where Satan had a right to test him, right there, boom. We've got to be very careful. God's really been impressing on me that what comes out of my mouth, what, where, when, how, be very careful because we're opening ourselves up for a test. So Jesus warns him, thank God. Jesus had been praying for all of us. He'd been praying for us right now. Uh, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded a permission to sift you like wheat or to test you. 32, verse 32. This is Luke chapter 22, verse 32. But I have, pray I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you, once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, Jesus didn't say to him, you're going to flunk the test. But he knew he was going to flunk it. He knew that. But he said, I have prayed for you. Now, God knows when we're going to flunk. God knows when we're going to flunk the test. He knows that. But I would pray for you that once you have turned. Here's the beauty of the whole thing in Peter's life. Peter knew how to repent. Yes. Peter knew how to turn around. When you make a mistake, you got to learn how to turn around and say, Lord, forgive me. And the mistake really was painful for Peter. We're going to read the story here in the next couple of moments. We're going to go back to Matthew 26. And uh, it was painful. He cried and cried and he wept and he cried when he really saw who he was. Fear will show you things that you never thought about yourself. 
people will show you that that's not me. I didn't say that. I didn't do that. That's you. That's you. And what happened? Peter really had a salvation, repentant experience with God. And he gave it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus had already prayed for him and said, once you have turned, which means repent, you've turned around, change your direction. Once you've changed your direction, I'm praying that you're going to be a great blessing to your brothers. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, and he was. He was a great blessing to the church in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. He preached up a storm. 3,000 people saved. And one day, one meeting, awesome. that was God. And that's because he had repented and turned his direction around. Say hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Peter learned an expensive lesson, which we all have to learn sometime, is we've got to be careful what we say and how we say it. Hallelujah. Turn with me back now to uh, the scriptures here, chapter 26. Going back to verse 31 one more time. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me. What a, what a statement. You, all of you, will fall away because of me, because of who I am. And then he gives them, this is important, the scriptural reference for this. Okay? This night, he said, I'm not talking about you falling away tomorrow or the next week. You're falling away tonight. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep yeah. of the flock shall be scattered. Yes. But after I have been raised... On the third day, he's saying, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, there again, they all flunked the test. They all flunked it. They all scattered. They all ran. Hmm. Some ran home. Some ran to their friend's house. They ran all different places. They took off. Some went back to uh, different groups that they had, were a part of. But they all flunked. But he said... Once I'm raised, I will meet you in Galilee. Say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And what he was saying is, you're going to make it. You're going to you're gonna fall down, bump your knee. You're going to make a mistake, but you're going to make it. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you're you, going to make it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel so good to know it makes you feel so good, me so good, and you so good, to know that Jesus prayed for us. Yes. And Jesus knows the mistakes we're going to make before we make them. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Jesus. He knows mm -hmm. we're going to make it, but he's prepared for that. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Peter came back and he was a powerful preacher of the gospel Thank in Jesus. the Jewish community. He affected Judaism like nobody else. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank Glory you, to God. Amen. <clears throat> But after you have been raised, I'll go ahead of you. After I have been raised, I'll go ahead of you. Verse 32, 33. But Peter said to him, even though all may fall away. This guy had a little problem with his ego. All may fall away because of you. I will never fall away. Now, this is important to remember. He really believed what he said. He believed it with all of his heart. There was no doubt inside of Peter. He believed he would never fall away or that fear would never get a hold of him. He believed it with everything that was in him. But God knows that there's a, there are tests coming. God knows that there are tests coming that some of us are going to get knocked down, but we're going to get up again. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to get up again. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So Jesus knew the test was coming and he knew that Peter was going to fail. Okay, Jesus said to him, truly I say to you that this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Yep. Not once, not twice, but three times. Incredible. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, even if I have to die, I will not deny you. I won't do it. That's how strong his faith was. I mean, his faith was strong. But all of a sudden, all the disciples said the same thing. Now notice, they all chimed in with Peter. We'll never leave you. We'll never be frightened. We'll never let you go. And they really believed it. They really did. So, Satan has tests for us that are designed. He knows exactly how to spook us. He knows how to spook us. 
And they got spooked when they were in the garden. When the crowd showed up with swords and clubs, they got spooked. I had a friend call me up this week. I shouldn't tell the story too much, but it's it's a good, it's a funny story. I said, what are you doing these days? He said, I'm going, I'm going around spooking people. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I go into the market and I, I don't wear a mask and they look like me like I'm, a, like I'm, like I'm Godzilla, like I'm a, a, an animal. He said, and then I go over right next to them and I start looking around and stuff right next to them, vegetables, meat, whatever, and they jump, they run away. He said, I'm having a great time. I'm spooking the whole crowd. <laughs> I'm spooking Ooh. everybody. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah. So don't you do that. Let him do that. But anyway, he's, he gets as part of his uh, part of his fun in life. He's spooking people now. So <laughs> the disciples got frightened, desperately frightened. Yes. Turn with me. Yes. Turn with me to Matthew 26, beginning on... Verse 69, Matthew 26, verse 69. Now this is after Jesus had been taken away out of the Garden of Gethsemane, and part of the trial had already begun. But now Peter is sitting outside in the courtyard. This is where he is. And a servant girl came to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. I saw you there. You were there. Fear hits him. Boom. Why? He thought that he was hiding. He thought he was hiding. Right. He thought he was out from sight. He was over there warming himself by the fire a little bit and uh, just hanging out with the crowd, watching what was going on. But he thought he was incognito. Watch out when you think you're incognito, when you're not, when you're not visible, because somebody will see you. That's right. And she saw him, and she spoke just that little word, you're one of his crowd. You're part of the Galilean gang. And uh, he, got, he got frightened. It put fear into him. Boom. Just like that. That one little statement from that little girl, that maid, that servant girl, put fear in Peter. you got to be careful in life. When people speak to you, they can put fear on you. So true. Even when you decide that you're not going to have fear, they can speak it right into your life. And so you got to be determined you're not going to have it. This is why when you go out of your house these days, speak faith, speak faith, speak faith, speak blessing. Don't allow people to destroy your faith or your blessing. Don't do it. You know, this will never end. No, don't even agree with them. Tell them they're crazy. It's going to end quickly. You know, this is going to end quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And it's a fraction of what the doctors and the doctors told us in the beginning. It's an absolute fraction of what they were talking about. He was talking about uh, two million people dying. Thank you, Jesus. God has control of all this. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Back to the book. Right to the book right now. Ahem. But he denied it. Peter denied it. Verse 70. Before them all saying, I do not know what you're talking about. That's the first denial. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you anyway? Ahem. When he had gone out to, the, out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. He's with him. He's one of his crew. He's part of it. And again, verse 72, he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. Now we're coming up on the third time. Verse 73. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. Up to this point, he had been just denial, just denying everything. But now they say to him, You speak with a twang. You're from down south. No, I'm not. <laughs> so... He couldn't even hide. He couldn't hide his speech. They were saying, we know you have the Galilean accent. You're with them. You're with them. Poor Peter. He couldn't even hide. He tried to hide, but he couldn't hide. Got himself in deep trouble. But God was using this. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God was using this to get a hold of Peter. You know why? God was going to show Peter who he really was. Peter thought he was something other than who God saw 
And so most of our time in our lives, we think of um, ourselves as something other than what God sees us as. And so Jesus, through this whole experience, allowed him to see himself. Now watch what happens here. Then he began to curse and swear, call down curses from heaven. I do not know the man, and immediately a rooster crowed. Third time he denied it. And he's, he's cursing and swearing. He's getting into bad language now. A rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said. Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. What a powerful experience that was. I feel the Holy yes, Ghost. Me too. Right. What a powerful experience. It was the confirmation of the prophetic word. The prophetic word spoken by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, personally to Peter. And then he says, yes, I did it. I was determined I wouldn't do it, but I did it. Fear gripped his heart. Fear gripped him. And he ends up doing something that he swore he would never do. But he did it. And notice what happens here. Verse 75. And he went out and he wept bitterly. He was bitterly weeping. He was repenting and asking God to forgive him for denying Jesus. When he really knew that he wouldn't do it. But he did do it. And the beauty is of this whole thing. She saw and he knew that. Jesus wasn't taken back by that. Jesus wasn't hurt by his denial. He said to him, I'm praying that once you get through this, you will turn, you will repent, you'll turn, and you'll work with your brothers and turn many to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, fear will make you do things you never thought you were going to do. Fear will bring you to a point of disaster sometimes. But God has given us control over this fear hallelujah and more and more i'm dealing with people in my own congregation and people i know that are just spouting fear all the time because they hear it 24 hours a day and so the, the wisest thing to do is watch five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night that's it that's it because really there isn't any news anyway it's all about coronavirus there's no news and so god knows all of this and he knows who we are and he's going to bring us through, and we're going to be victorious, and we're going to see a mighty Holy Ghost revival, and God's going to use us all. Thank you, Jesus. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Stand up with me wherever you are. Hallelujah. We're going to pray against fear once again. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Father, we curse fear as it tries to wind its way like a snake around our head and our minds and our bodies, and we curse it, and we do not have it. It will not have control over us. It will not. And we thank you. And we're going to come back to you. And we're not going to allow fear to control us. Just like Peter. And we're going to have a yes, repentance Lord. situation. We're going to repent and get rid of it. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so Lord, as thank these Lord. people make a commitment to get rid of fear. We thank you that you're becoming thank real Jesus. in a greater way to them. They're getting rid of fear. They're not going to have fear control their lives. Thank They're you. going to live for Jesus. Live thank for you, God thank without you. fear. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Next week now, it'll be Mother's Day, and we'll be preaching and teaching on mothers. We won't be on fear, but uh, we thank God for this whole series we've done on fear. It's taken a lot of, it's touched a lot of people's lives. I know it's changed me. I've been doing a lot of thinking and praying about it, and uh, it'll touch yours. God bless you. See you next week.